snare drum sounds can vary as widely as the snare drum player hitting them. However, certain frequency characteristics are common to nearly all snares, and knowing these elements will allow you to use equalization to craft the exact snare sound you're looking for. The bottom end of the snare, or body, can range in the areas of 175 to 250 hertz and is largely dependent on the size of the snare, the drum's depth, and how tight or loose the heads are tuned. These lower frequencies are generally what give the snare drum its tonal qualities. Boosting in these frequencies with wide cues will give you that full tonal range snare sound that has always reminded me of the dribbling of a basketball. Narrow cue boosts can even be used to pull out specific tonal frequencies, nearly allowing you to tune the snare to your liking. Cuts to these body frequencies will thin out the tonal elements of the snare drum, placing much more focus on the snares themselves, usually found in the higher frequencies. There are generally a few problem frequencies that often compete with other tones in a mix or are simply displeasing to the ear. They commonly occur in mathematical intervals, for example, 400 and 800 hertz, or 500 hertz and 1K. These trouble frequencies are pretty easy to identify by starting with a boost at 1K and moving around to pick out the most unpleasant tones. Then, you can cut the identified frequency and again at half that frequency. The impact of the stick or the crack sound of most snares can vary in its tonal placement, but a good place to start looking is almost always 2K. A narrow Q boost here can craft a more aggressive snare sound, while a cut can soften and smooth out the stick's impact. The brightness or crispness of a snare sound can be brought out with a wider Q boost in the area of 5K. Of course, if a darker snare tone is what you are going for, then cutting in this range is the action you will want to take. Shelving boosts above 10K can accentuate the sizzle of the snares themselves vibrating on the bottom head. This is commonly referred to as adding air or breath to the snare. Using this shelf to cut frequencies can tone down the snare's sounds, swinging the focus back to the tonal range of the drum. Snare drums are usually used as backbeats to the kick drum, but often the two will overlap. To make sure that the kick has enough room to live underneath the snare sound, as well as to reduce phasing issues, a cut shelf or even a low frequency roll off can be applied, often around 40 to 50 hertz, but sometimes even as high up as the 120 hertz range. An intelligent combination of boosts and cuts across the wide tonal range of the instrument can give you the perfect snare drum which cuts through clean without drowning out or interfering with the rest of your mix. Another thing to consider is that snare drums are commonly recorded using both a top and bottom mic. In these situations, the snares themselves and most of the higher frequency elements can be pulled out from the bottom mic, allowing you to focus the top mic to shape body and tone.